Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we will be looking at a few mail days. This is the post that I received in the last two weeks. I've got some pretty nice cards in there. So let's take a look. Uh, this one comes from Rotterdam, the Netherlands. And let's take a look. Oh, it's actually, it's double sided. So here you can already see one of the cards. And let me take it off camera for a moment to open it up. It is well packed, so I appreciate that. Here we go. So there we go. Actually, two cards. So one is still a mystery, so we'll check that out in a moment. And this is an oubliette. The card kind of spiked because of, uh, of Popper when it came up in, in, in Magic, I guess. But also for old school, it's a very solid card. Um, it's two black and one. It's an enchantment from the Arabian Nights expansion. And it says, select a creature in play when Oubliette is cast. Uh, that creature is considered out of play as long as Oubliette is in play. Hence, the creature cannot be the target of spells and cannot receive any damage. Use special powers, attack or defend. All counters and enchantments on a creature remain, but are also out of play. If Oubliette is removed, the creature returns to play tapped. And I think that last thing is very important. It comes back into play tapped. So it's not like, um, you know, you can, for example, you, you cast the Oubliette on, let's say, a Sarah Angel. Um, you attack with your Scape Zombies and your opponent plays a quick disenchant on the Oubliette and thinks, okay, now I'm going to block with my Sarah Angel and you're going to lose your creature. That is not going to happen because the Angel comes in back into play tapped. So I think that's very important um, aspect uh, of this card and it makes it a lot better so you can think yeah but it's not um, removal because my opponent or it's not permanent removal because my opponent can still deal with it absolutely true but let's say your opponent is wasting a disenchant or any other type of removal on an oubliette that's not that bad i mean that that's that's the way I always look at it, I always think, okay, then you're not using it on another target. So it's always interesting to look at these cards from that perspective as well, where you say, okay, it's not permanent removal, like for example, when you play a Terror on the Sarah Angel, but on the other hand, if he has to use another card to get rid of the Oubliette and then and, and, and some quality removal, then it's still a one-on-one -on -one trade and maybe in certain decks it's, it's better. So Oubliette, interesting. And then we have the other card, it's my first Oubliette, by the way, so I'm hoping to get more. And my other card, also a first for me. Um, I think the art is just stunning. This is the Urborg. And I now have Pendlehaven, um, Urborg, and Hammerheim. And I also have Teleria, by the way. So I'm missing one more, let me check. So I guess I'm missing the White Land still. Oh, of course, of course I'm missing that one. The most expensive one. So here we've got Urborg. That art is just stunning. What a cool, badass castle. Purple castle in the middle of lava. It kind of reminds me of an old video game, you know. You would be the hero and you would have to get into this dark castle to try to free the princess purple crazy castle. Uh, let's see what the card actually does. So you can tap it and it just gives you uh, a black mana. Uh, but you can also tap it to remove a first strike ability or a swamp walk ability from target creature until end of turn. Now, actually the first strike ability can be kind of handy, especially when you're playing against uh, white knights or black knights and, and you can take care of it because those creatures are, I guess, the creatures that are played the most in old school magic with first strike. I guess you have tundra wolves as well. Um, there are not that many first strike creatures. There are more than just the ones I now mentioned, but those are the ones that I see most often when playing. Let me know in the comments uh, if there are other old school creatures that you see quite frequently that at first strike. Maybe I'm missing like a really well known one, but I don't think so. But let me know in the comments if uh, if I do. Um, let's see who's the artist here. That's Brian. Wow, Brian, you did a fantastic job. I'm really happy to have this uh, in my collection. And also let's see there the flavor text. Resignantly beneath the sky, 
the melancholy waters lie, so blend the turrets and shadows there, that all seem pendulous in air, while from a proud tower in town, death looks gigantically down. Oh, it's an Edgar Allan Poe poem, The City and the Sea. Ah, don't you just love, don't you just love that about old school? You got, you got, you got a poem on here by, by Edgar Allan Poe on a magic card. It, Fantastic. Okay, so um, yeah, I guess I'll, I'll take this out of the inner sleeve as well to have a little bit of an inspection here. I mean, the cards are decent, you know, this is the quality that I paid for, it's fine. And uh, you know, I, I use magic cards to play with, so I'm actually fine. I don't need like a mint condition or anything like that. Beautiful, beautiful cards. Uh, thank you, this actually came from Eric. So Eric, thank you very much. And no. We are not done. We have another mail day. Yes, more mail. Um, you know how it goes when you see when you see a nice card and uh, you have to order it. And it was the same with this one. Uh, it's from a Dutch seller. And he um, he offered a card, really nice card that I don't have in my collection yet. I actually mentioned it in one of the other videos. Here we go. Now, this is quality packing, I have to admit. So thank you for this. This is, I like this. This is solid stuff, like nothing can happen. And then the nice thing is this card is actually in a very uh, a questionable condition. So it's it's nice to see that it's so well protected. It wasn't always the case for this card. If it's the one that I think it is, let me just check to make sure. Yeah, okay. I don't want to give it away too soon. Uh, okay, it's still a little bit stuck. We got some more sellotape to deal with here. And uh, it's also in a top loader. So that is very good. As you can see already, like this is a card with some experience. Look at that, which is fine because it's priced accordingly. And for me, I just really like having the originals in my collection. Each of these cards, they they make new decks possible. You know, they make new things possible. This is actually going to go in, um, I don't know, maybe my old school Brawl deck or my Highlander Brew. Not that I really have those, actually, by the way, but I, I, I could make one, and I was thinking about, oh, this could be a handy one. So look at that. Let's take it out of the sleeve. Look at that. It has seen places. Okay, I'm going to turn it around, and there it is. It is the Caracas. Fortunately for me, these have dropped in price and that made it um, affordable for me to get one of these. And obviously it returns a legend to owner's hand. So if you're playing with a legend yourself, this can be quite a handy card to play with. So I kind of see possibilities there, pretty obvious, but that's why. And also the art. Again, you know, these cards are just very beautiful. Even if the ability would be really bad, I would probably want, want one still. Even more mail. Uh, this is a very small mail day. Yes, more mail! And to all the other mail days, I think this is just one card. Very well packed though, so I appreciate that. Um, and I bought this card because, hey, we recognize this wrapping. Oh, it's already here. I bought this card actually because of the condition. I already have a play set, but you know, one of the cards is just in terrible condition and just don't want to spoil it. Yeah, one of the cards is just in terrible condition. And then I saw somebody offering this card and I was like, well, it would be nice to have four cards that are kind of in the same condition. I don't really mind condition that much if you, Check out my mail days, you probably know I don't really, but I do, I, I you know, I kind of like consistency. If I have a play set and all the cards are like in good condition and one card is heavily played, then I do mind. And that was actually the case with this card here with the disenchant. So this disenchant, oh, there's a little flick. Let's, let's get rid of that. Okay, it's a good thing it's actually on the cover. So let's take that off on the sleeve, I should say. 
So this disenchant is really nice. This is an unlimited disenchant. And as you can see, it's in a really nice condition. And this is it. This were the mill day. So I hope you enjoyed it. Kept getting a little insight into my collection and what kind of cards I'm currently uh, buying. I've got one really golden rule when I'm buying cards, they have to be affordable. That's very important. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, I love finishing little sets and little cycles and whatnot. But I guess, you know, every every Magic player has that. Um, anyway, thank you for watching another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. If you want to support the channel, you can do so by leaving a like, leaving a comment, sharing this on your socials, and become a subscriber if you're not a subscriber yet. I saw that we just broke through the 1800 subscribers, so that's fantastic. We're going marching on to the 2K subs, so I'm really looking forward to that moment. And um, you can also support the channel financially, and you can do that by becoming a Patreon. It already starts at one little dollar a month, so you can click on the info card that's appearing right now and check it out. Have a look. I really appreciate it. Um, talking about Patreon, let's go to the end scroll. Let's go to the patrons of Timmy Talk. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? The light in the morning. Way day now she rises. Way day now she rises. Way day now she rises. Her light in the morning. Put him in the long boat until he's sober. Put him in the long boat until he's sober. Put him in the long boat until he's sober. Ich kann das Fingertisch zum Bakasin.